All right, so here we are in Bismarck, North Dakota. It's a rainy and cruddy day, and uh, I'd like to just real quickly show you this uh, statue. This is the Capitol building up here. It's uh, one of the tallest in the nation. I think it's 18 stories tall. Big uh, open concourse here that nobody is around today. But uh, here we are, Bismarck, North Dakota, nice and gray. But it really was beautiful until I, uh, you know, uh, woke up this morning. And uh, anyway, hope you have a really good time. I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, speech, and Lord bless you. Hi, I'm Charlie Garrett. I'm a minister from Sarasota, Florida, and I'm today in the capital of North Dakota, which is Bismarck, North Dakota. It's a rainy day, and um, I'm on the capital grounds, but uh, I don't expect anybody to come by, but I'm committed to uh, doing this uh, speech, even though nobody's around. And uh, it's kind of an unusual capital. There's really no place that's logical for speaking. It's just kind of a square building, and uh, but it's beautiful inside, and the people are most were most hospitable. But anyway, um, uh, I'll go ahead and get started by reciting a prayer or saying a prayer that I uh, composed for the state of North Dakota. Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere handbreadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Selah. Today I stand at the capital of North Dakota, my 29th state to visit, and the 39th to be accepted into our union. Gracious and benevolent creator, here I stand today in North Dakota, a state where more than 85% of the residents claim faith in your precious son. Lord God, I thank you for the faithful prayer for the nom I thank you for the faithful, pray for the nominal, and plead for the lost. May you look down with favor upon this state and upon these people and bless them with an abundant revival. Something so powerful that it will be talked about by their children's children. May this people be so moved that they proclaim your name in the government, in the schools, in the parks, and at their homes. May they ever proclaim your glory, your majesty, and your splendor. And may this be for a blessing to them. May it be said, then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard a scroll of remembrance and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. They will be mine, says the Lord Almighty. In the day when I make up my treasured possession, I will spare them, just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him. These things I pray for you rebuke and discipline men for their sin. You consume their wealth like a moth. Each man is but a breath, Selah. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for help. Be not deaf to my weeping. For I dwell with you as an alien, a stranger, as all my fathers were. Look away from me that I may rejoice again before I depart and am no more. This is my petition and this is my prayer for the state of North Dakota, the Peace Garden State, whose motto is liberty and union now and forever, one and inseparable. May they find eternal peace, liberty, union, and contentment in the garden you have prepared for those who have received eternal life through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I, I said that uh, this was the 29th state that I'm visiting. I'm now more than halfway done. Tomorrow will, or the next state I go to will be the 30th and I'll be three-fifths of the way done with this. I hope that you're taking the challenge and reading your Bible and that um, in all things you'll remember that Jesus is Lord. He loves you and he gave you his word as a way of knowing him and thus in turn knowing God the Father. And I'm sorry about not being able to read too well. Holding this and uh, trying to keep the wind down from blowing this is, is rather difficult. Uh, I'd like to read you the 53rd Psalm. For the director of music, according to Mahalat, a masculine of David, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone is turned away. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Will the evildoers never learn? Those who devour my people as men eat bread and who do not call on God? There they were, overwhelmed with dread, when there was nothing to dread. God scattered the bones of those who attacked you. You put them to shame, for God despised them. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. And next I'd like to read you the preamble to the state of uh, North Dakota's constitution and section three, which deals with religious liberty. We, the people of North Dakota, grateful to almighty God for the blessings of civil and religious liberty, do ordain and establish this constitution. 
And then in section three, the free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship without discrimination or preference shall be forever guaranteed in this state and no person shall be rendered incompetent to be a witness or juror on account of his opinion on matters of religious belief. But the liberty of conscience hereby secured shall not be so construed as to excuse acts of licentiousness or justify practices inconsistent with the peace or safety of this state. And next I'd like to read you a U.S. Congressional Proclamation from 1784. It's rather long. I'm only going to read the parts that uh, specifically speak about God, and even that is kind of long. But uh, here we go. Whereas it hath pleased the supreme ruler of the universe of his infinite goodness and mercy, so to calm the minds and do away the resentments of the powers lately engaged in a most bloody and destructive war, and to dispose their hearts towards amity and friendship, that a general pacification hath taken place, and particularly a divine treaty of peace between the said United States of America and His Britannic Majesty, uh, was signed at Paris on the third day of September in the year of our Lord, 1783. The instruments of the final ratifications of which were exchanged at Passy on the 12th day of May in the year of our Lord, 1784, whereby a finishing hand was put to the great work of peace and the freedom, sovereignty, and independence of these states fully and completely established. And whereas in pursuit of the great work of freedom and independence and the progress of the contest in which the United States of America have been engaged and on the success of which the dearest and most essential rights of human nature depended, the benign interposition of divine providence hath on many occasions been most miraculously and abundantly manifested. And the citizens of the United States have the greatest reason to return their most hearty and sincere praises and thanksgiving to the God of their deliverance, whose name be praised. Deeply impressed, therefore, with the sense of the mercies manifested to these United States and of the blessings which it hath pleased God to shower down on us of our future dependence at all times on His power and mercy as the only source from which so great benefits can be derived, we, the United States of America, in the Committee of the States Assembled, do earnestly recommend to the supreme executives of the several states to set apart Tuesday, the 19th day of October next, as a day of prayer, public prayer, and thanksgiving, that all the people of the United States may then assemble in their respective churches and congregations to celebrate with grateful hearts and joyful and united voices the mercies and praises of their all-bountiful Creator, most holy and most righteous for his innumerable favors and mercies vouchsafe unto them, more especially that he hath been graciously pleased to so conduct us through the perils and dangers of the war as fin finally to establish the United States in freedom and independency and to give them a name and place among the princes and nations of the earth. And then down at the bottom it says that he may be placed to pleased to smile upon us and bless our husbandry, fishery, our commerce, and especially our schools and seminaries of learning, and to raise up from among our youth men of eminent, uh, men eminent for virtue, learning and piety, to his service and in church and state, to cause virtue and true religion to flourish, to give all nations amity, peace, and concord, and to fill the world with his glory. And next I'd like to read you the preface to the Gideon's Bible. The Bible contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's Charter. Here, paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand subject, our good, the design, and the glory of God, its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. It is given you in life, will be opened at the judgment, and be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the greatest labor, and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents.